customer traffic to your website, there it goes again, that symbiotic integrated digital relationship, driving them to the websites, the best use of traditional mediums, especially TV, and not, this is not last, but on this chart it's last, 64% of the respondents between ages of 14 and 75 actually visited a website after, after they saw the commercial. Right, so if I'm looking at that relationship, I, I took it a step further and I, I looked up a, a Google consumer survey that found that two-thirds of smartphone owners actually use their phones to learn more about what they saw in a TV commercial. So that relationship is there, <clears throat> but again, the most important part of your marketing isn't only all the things that it could do for you, the integrated marketing approach, but how much it's going to cost, right? We're all about cost. That's where we are in America. How many people in here give estimates for their business? You should all raise your hand, because anytime anybody calls you to do something and they ask for how much it's going to cost, that's an estimate. They might not call it an estimate, but they're checking it out, right? Hey, how much? You're like, they tell me, and then I call another one of your competitors. I get the how much. <clears throat> but what I want you all to see, and again, I don't need you to shout it out, but do all of you know how much, based on your marketing expertise, how much money you're spending to reach a potential customer? To reach a potential customer. Does everybody know this? Do you know this? We will sit down with you and we'll figure that out for you because that's a very important thing because it dovetails with how much you spend to acquire that customer. Anybody in here as a car dealer? Anybody a car dealer? Anybody ever been in a car? Anyone? And they, look at people raising their hands. They're so proud. I've been in a car. <laughs> hey, how many people have uh, uh, a roof on their house? Oh, I got two of them. Eh? I, got an, I, I bought car and roof. Yay. <clears throat> uh, car dealers know exactly Right? That's not because they're so rich. They're very analytical. They teach us things in our industry that I could teach you. They're very analytical about how much it costs to acquire a customer. Now their acquisition costs, they would spend up to $500 to acquire a new customer. Some of you might go out of business if it costs you $500. So your, your choice isn't how much is it going to cost me to acquire, it's how much does it cost to reach. Follow this. The lower cost of reaching a consumer will allow you to lower your acquisition cost. Now how low can you go? How low can you go? Let's do it. How low can you do it? Jessica, what? <laughs> how low? How low can you go? Can you go? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This is how low you could go. <sighs> big, big, big competitor to uh, our, us is uh, newspaper, yellow pages, and direct mail. Direct mail is based on the mail. The US mail. Okay, if I put a stamped envelope, Put a stamp on an envelope, it costs me 48 cents, right? It doesn't cost forever, it costs 48 cents, which means you would spend 48 cents to get into my house. Now, how about, I'll tell you, use me as a consumer. I'm a good consumer. A lot of you have businesses. Wouldn't you like to reach me? Wouldn't you like to tell me all about your business for 48 cents? 48 cents. It's only going to cost you 48 cents to reach me. Yeah, you'd say, oh, I'll give it a shot. Well, the direct mail that you get in your mailbox, the junk mail that's in the envelopes, that's as inexpensive as three cents a household. Now it gets mailed to a mailbox, but it gets in your house for three cents. You would spend three cents to try to reach me. Well, I'm going to tell you something that shocks most people, and I want you to hear it, and then I want you to look at it when my salespeople show it to you. Television costs less than one cent a person. And I get it. Not everybody is your customer. That's the point. If I could reach your customer at the exact moment they're ready to buy, I, if I was that smart, I would actually open up a business and put you out of business. But you need to be as low as possible on the reach cost. And if you're using the medium of direct mail, that's junk mail, if you're using the medium of television, you are using the Tiffany marketing. And that's how much we price. And when it's all said and, and done, that's your goal. Whether you do business with us today or not, you should always challenge now how much it costs, how much it costs to reach a potential customer. Somebody tells you it costs a thousand dollars, but you reach one person, that's costing you a thousand. But if you spend $1,000 on TV and I can reach 100,000 people, that's a good deal. Don't ever discount. Those of you who bought TV, you already experienced it. But lower cost keeps your acquisition cost low. Let's reach the most people in the lowest, at least amount of time, reaching them at the lowest cost. And aggressive marketing, integrated marketing makes it stick. You know, I said it earlier. I said it when I opened up. You need to be in control of your marketing. You have a website. You're in control of the content. Content is what drives people to stay information, content. But when I talk to local businesses, I actually think there are only about a dozen and a half things that everybody's concerned about. Sell product and service today, get your phone to ring, increase market share, add social media elements, test television pulling power, and improve customer retention, reach a relevant audience. 
Let me show you something on this chart that says email marketing. <clears throat> we're, <clears throat> we're very conscious of the fact that people like to target. You might tell us you only want to reach people in Albany or just in Schenectady and television is very broad and how do I know I'm reaching the right people. We could do targeted email for as little as 25,000 people to as many as 100,000 people in the, in the tri-state area if you want <clears throat> for very little money and we're targeting people that are double opt-in, double scrubbed, white labeled email. What does that mean? Somebody who's in the marketplace to buy insurance in the next six months will have filled out a survey to this direct mail company and we will send it directly from you. You're not spamming them. They're actually requesting home improvements. They're actually requesting drug rehabilitation information. It's just the way it goes. But we can help you with that. We can also do everything from helping you acquire new customers, beat your competition. If your competition is on TV, they're beating you. Right? I know that uh, <laughs> Terminex and Orkin is beating everybody else because you didn't even mention who they are. Couldn't mention, couldn't mention more than three. And, I, and I, I helped you with the first two. So I want you to be very conscious of the fact that if you're on TV, you're going to beat your competition. You got to trust me on that. You're going to beat your competition. Create a sense of urgency. Use retargeting on the web. Who in here, by a show of hands, actually either uses retargeting or knows what it is? Anybody raise a hand. Retargeting on the web. Yeah, you use it or you know what it is? I know what it is. You know what it is? That's when they... Yeah, no, no, I'm not asking you to tell me what it is. How dare you, bro? <laughs> <coughs> We practice this. <laughs> so on February 1st, I decided I'm, I'm going to buy my wife some jewelry for Valentine's Day. And I go on a jewelry website. And I look at some jewelry. I look at a bracelet, a necklace, whatever. But I didn't buy anything. I didn't buy anything. Because I still had two weeks before Valentine's Day. So I left that website. What was following me around on the web for the next two solid weeks? Yeah, the jewelry store. Right, so you've had that happen to you. That's retargeting. But let me flip the other way because of, and he knew what it was, because of you and your business. How are you utilizing retargeting? And if you're not, we can help you with retargeting. We could put retargeting. If someone's coming at your, at your website, they're anonymously leaving. But what we're doing is they, they, we know if they're looking at insurance quotes or something, they're interested. They're interested in solar. They're interested in whatever it is why wouldn't you have that set up? And we could set it up for three weeks, six weeks, 12 weeks. Real estate people love it because they know if someone's looking for a house, they're not buying it two years from now. Within the next three months, they're buying that house. Look, somebody comes to the website for, you know, a spiritual, whatever. you want to reach out to them. And they're not going to be offended. Now, I had a little bit of offense by that. By, and around Christmas, uh, my kids were home from college and they were complaining that I don't, my, my pancakes suck or something, I don't know. And they, they said, why don't you ever make waffles? And I'm like, I don't have a waffle maker. So they said, buy a waffle maker. So I went right onto Amazon, looked at a couple of waffle makers, and I bought a waffle maker. It's six months later, waffles and waffle makers are chasing me around the web. <laughs> they got to shut it off. How many waffle makers can I buy? Oh, my Lord. But that's a good thing for your business. We can offer you that. In fact, part of the offer today includes either email campaign retargeting or something called geofencing does everybody know what geofencing is geofencing literally explained it do you know that too you don't ha ha geofencing is let's say you own a retail store and you know that probably within a 10 to 15 mile radius that's where all your customers really come from you know local gyms uh restaurants hair salons 15 20 miles that's as far as people will drive on the beltway what there's this, we could set it up so that their phone gets pinged if they're in your area with an ad from your business. You're actually hitting people within that geo fence, right? Geo targeted. Get it? You can find out more information. We have an awesome uh, digital sales manager who can answer all your questions on that. Um, again, improve return on investment, reach the mobile consumer, recapture lost customers. Now, it's only one more slide, and I'm going to show you an awesome idea that could help your business. Get everything I just talked about. But here's the best way to use integrated marketing. We want to take your business, get in front of as many consumers as we can, use reach and frequency on television, integrate marketing at the lowest cost possible. You garner market share. It will lead to a transaction, obviously, when the trigger event occurs. Now, I'm a TV guy. That doesn't mean I only talk about TV. And I know it sounds like I'm talking a lot about TV, but the literally, you know, the centerpiece that most local businesses are missing 
is television. And there's no such thing as being on television for a day or two or a week or a month unless you have a grand opening or you're going out of business. What I want to do is I want to take away all the notions that it's so expensive and I can't afford it. We're talking specifically about your business. We're talking about fixing your marketing problem. And your marketing problem starts and ends with you're not as relevant as you think you are. You're not in front of enough people. You don't have enough people coming to your website. You don't have enough people interacting with your brand. You don't. And there's no such thing as overexposure. Okay, anybody ever know that company that has the swoosh? You know the company with the swoosh? Like, you can't get away from it. You think they're overexposed? $25 billion later? They're not overexposed. They're everywhere. You want to be everywhere. Or you want people to think you're everywhere. And you do that with a long-term TV campaign. No, not for a year or two years. When long-term, in my vernacular, is four months. Because you know what happened in January, February, March, and April? You totally know what happened January, February, March, and April because it finished. Whatever happened, whatever phone calls you made, whatever people came to your website was the benefit and the report card of your marketing. But for the next four months, June, July, August, September, if you don't change what you're doing, if you don't get more aggressive, I'm not exactly sure that you're making a, a good decision with your marketing. You need to do something aggressive. And I'm not suggesting you do something aggressive for the next 20 years. I hope you do. But for the next four months, that commitment that you make to take an aggressive stance will literally be what I call the long-term TV campaign. And the report card for us would be, I want to beat whatever happened the last four months. Because you got to trust me, the schedule that we're putting together for you, the opportunity to use some digital campaign with it, is going to be a very aggressive campaign. You will become a major advertiser in certain areas on our television stations. This is an opportunity for you you don't want to beat. So, Start branding and reaching new customers ASAP. Combine it with some of our digital assets and get the best of all worlds. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed this, but everything on TV is very accusatory. Have you been in an accident? Called Aaron Shapiro, lawyer, right? It doesn't make me want to be in an accident. Hey, honey, I want to be in an accident, right? Uh, do you have psoriasis? No, I don't. I wish I did. Anybody see that commercial? There's a guy, his face is melting. He has like shingles or something. And he's like sitting. It's a, never a woman. There's never a woman who has shingles. You notice that? It's like a guy, his face is melting. And then somebody at work, a woman says, hey, uh, how you doing? He's like, my face is melting. I'm not doing good. I don't want shingles. But I saw concerning, right? And again, Television's that way. Now you got to listen with this. Very creative, right? It tell, oh, you, you, you have dandruff, you got to do your hair. You have dry eyes, you need drops. You have bad breath, you, you got bad teeth. I mean, that's what TV, TV, TV commercials are that. It doesn't make me want any of those things. So this commercial comes on a lot and it says, are you over 62? No. Do you want a reverse mortgage? Hell no. You know, see, I'm done, right? I'm not over 62. But there is a commercial that comes on recently, recently, that says, are you over 50 years old? I am. Do you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom? I do! <laughs> oh my God! I'm telling you too much information. But do you think my children are paying attention to those commercials? And they're glossing, oh, there's certain things that are running because we watch selectively. We watch based on what's important to us. We watch based on our trigger events. We react because of those things. You need to be in front of a ton of people with a great concept, great idea. We're going to put you in front of a huge audience at a low cost, I told you, under a penny a household. Maximize and leverage your brand, but you're going to garner market, chain, can, uh, market share with our campaign. Because, see, I look at a lot of local businesses, and in this area, upstate New York, we own television stations in Albany, Buffalo, Syracuse. We're all over up, up here. Rochester. We're up in the whole, this is a part of the country. We give, take out surveys with a lot of local business. We know what you spend. I'm not trying to spend your money, but we know what you spend on marketing. Now, I don't know if you know, you know what you spend, but in general, small to medium-sized businesses will spend somewhere between, it's not a massive number, somewhere between $3,500 and about $6,000 on all their marketing on any given month. And you got to add everything. you got to add everything up, what your marketing is. Could be a sign, could be a t-shirt, whatever it is. But it's not $20,000 a month, and it's certainly, if you're in business and you're spending $200 a month, I, I, yeah, again, I'd keep doing it if it's working. But what we did was we took a very close look at, instead of taking, you're not a multi-billion dollar business yet, like we are, so we want to give you a chance. We want to give you a chance to get the best of all worlds. And the way you do that is you need something creative. You need people to remember the commercial, right? Does everybody remember this? Anybody in here remember this? There was a commercial, and it said, um, 
Winston tastes good. Anybody want to finish that for me? Like a cigarette should. Hasn't been on television for 45 years. Right? Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. You remember these things. Now, I remember, I can't, you know, who's the gecko guy and who's the, who's the Aflac? You know those things. But what I want to do is tell you something that I created, and I created this three years ago. Because I see local businesses who are not struggling, I don't want to use the word struggling, but they want to take advantage of everything I just talked about. So what I did is I came up with my own campaign, which becomes your campaign. And the campaign has a tagline, and it's very memorable, and it's actually been very successful. We've actually had over 4,000 businesses buy into it over the last three years. We've rolled it out with a beta in Albany, but we're launching it in June. And that's why you're here in May. We're launching this campaign in June. The elements of the campaign are going to be a full throttled, reach and frequency uh, television schedule that's going to reach literally over one million impressions. You're going to actually be close to two million impressions. We're going to put you in everything news. All our news shows. Nobody TiVo's news. I'm going to put you in the morning news, in the late news. I'm going to put you in the overnight news. I'm going to put you in the weekend news. Every time somebody turns on our news, you're going to be on it. I'm going to run you three times a week in every single one of those shows for 16 solid weeks. Think about just that pounding of your message over and over again. But to set you apart, I'm going to give you something that you don't get on the internet and you won't get in the yellow pages and you can't get in direct mail is category exclusivity. Because when we run that campaign and I use that tagline, you'll be the only solar panel company. You'll be the, what's your business? Gutters. You're the only gutter guy. You're going to be the only business in there. So what's the name of the campaign? The campaign is called now, and I'm going to show it to you, it's called We Know Why You're Awake, right? Now, in San Antonio, Texas, we have a rehabilitation center called SOBA of Texas. You can look it up. And they've done this campaign in actually 15 of our markets. They do exactly what you do. They're rehabilitation for drugs, gambling, all those things, uh, you know, drug abuse. And it's the tone that changes, right? We know why you're awake. Someone in your family has been affected. Yours would be, we know why you're awake. You don't feel like cleaning those gutters anymore. You get it? So let me show you a couple of samples of commercials. Like, give me one second and uh, talk amongst yourselves. Topic is, you love this. Keep going. <laughs> this was fantastic. Let me run you a couple of commercials. You'll get a feel for it. And then, uh, and then I'll move you out. We know why you're Whoops. So what I want you to do is, you notice the commercial starts with, it's, a, it's a, like literally one second, it just goes boom, we know why you're awake. This is Homes Plus Realty, it's in Minneapolis, they get their, you know, their website on, they get their phone number on if they want. This one. It's too hot. Get your air conditioning repaired today for the right price by the AirServe experts. And get to sleep. So if you notice, this is a client. It's AirServe. It's their phone number, their website. We know why you're awake. You can't sleep because you've got shopping on your mind. That's true, right? Um, it doesn't matter what the, what the category is. What I'm showing you is the campaign itself has an Albany look to it. The, the commercial will open. And entertainment. The com even if I shut this off, this is uh, for a chiropractor. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not running you one commercial here and there. I'm going to run you three commercials every single week in every single news program that we have. So you're going to become the We Know Why You're Awake gutter guy. You're going to be the We Know Why You're Awake insurance guy. So, again, what we, what you, what, what, remember, like I told you, how television acts. We don't create, I'll get to you in a second, we don't create the need. What we're doing is we're challenging the fact you don't know that I have three sons, and you don't know that I'm concerned that they're in school and they're drinking or they're doing whatever. So it's like, we know why you're awake. Your kids aren't home, and you need more insurance with these kids, right? They're all driving now. What are you doing? They scare the hell out of me. What was the question? So what do you do for nightly, like, um, evening news? Is that 5 o'clock? I'm not going to buy something that says, why are you awake? Yeah, well, you can't watch television unless you're awake. That's the first thing I'll tell you. So you don't change it? No, no. In fact, it's, it's, like saying, it's like saying, have you been in an accident? Is there a better time of day to ask someone if you've been in an accident? It's a little less clunky than me saying, I know what's keeping you up at night. You know, when somebody talks to you, it, again, you know, again, it's uh, each, each his own. What we do is we only have room for 10 slots anyway. So we only have 10 clients, 
and obviously we have, uh, this is just one thing we have. I'm not trying to, you know, bully no, into it. We, here's, here's what happened. Originally, originally what happened was, first of all, it's uh, probably dark uh, nine months out of the year in Albany past around 5.30 uh, at night. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. I mean, you know, it, until daylight savings times, it gets dark at 5.30. But it's not a dark, it's not like we know why it's dark. It's just, it, it's almost like, it, it got, again, um, I have a, a, a weird creative mind, so I have to explain it to, to you so that you, you at least see my vision. So what happened was, I had this guy who was an RV dealer, and the guy asked me, in one of the meetings, in fact, he raised his hand like you did, and I said yes, and he said, let me ask you something, slicky boy. That's what he called me, slicky boy? Thank God you didn't call me that. So anyway, he said, wait a minute, how do you know that the people that are watching these commercials at that time are going to be a customer of mine? So I said, well, what, what business are you in? So he says, well, I'm an RV dealer. I said, well, I'm going to give you a great example of how television can't create a customer. I would never buy an RV, but there are a lot of people who would never buy a motorcycle, right? It's very dangerous. I just happen to be a badass, so I have a motorcycle. What's up? <laughs> but it's very dangerous, but I don't want an RV. So that commercial could run all day long. But I said, look, how many, how many RV dealers are there? He says, there's me and another guy. I said, well, I'm going to go to your competitor, and he's going to get the Wiener Wire Wake campaign. You can run anything you want. But Wiener Wire Wake, your family's going on vacation, and you want to take it, take it on the road, whatever the line is. Anyway, the reason why I tell you this story is he bought this, and it ran exactly in the areas where I... Uh